Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. This is the first episode in a new series where I can just do any general questions you guys have about LWJGL. So in this specific tutorial, what we're going to be doing is setting up a project from scratch that uses LWJGL and I am GUI. Now I am GUI is an immediate mode GUI is what it stands for. And all that means is that you don't have any of the retained mode GUI applications where you have to set up callbacks for when a button's pressed and all that stuff which makes working with GUIs really difficult and annoying. Instead you can have a simple if button that means the button was pressed. And that's basically the whole construct of I am GUI. Now it goes deeper than that and there are several good tutorials on how to set up an I am GUI framework and everything but we're not actually going to be building it we're just going to be using it which is a lot easier. And so I will go through the steps to set up that project and get it working. And then we can take a look at some of the features of I am GUI. So let's get coding and see if we can get this done. All right. So like I said, I am starting completely from scratch. So let's open up IntelliJ or whatever IDE you are using and we will set up a new project. So I'll wait for this to start up real quick. I'm going to hit create a new project because I want to create a new project. And I'm going to make sure I choose Gradle and Java since that is what will be easiest for this. Then I'm going to actually not give the group ID because we're not doing anything with Maven. And I'm going to tell, call the artifact ID test I am GUI. And then it's putting it inside a C dev Java project test I am GUI, which is where I want it. So I will keep that and hit finish. Let it create the project real quick. And now you can see we have an empty project with no source code, but we do have this build.gradle file, which we will be using in just a moment. So to be completely honest, I'm not even completely sure how Gradle files work. I haven't looked extensively into it. I do know that it is just a build system, which means it's just a way to tell Java, hey, this is the order I want you to compile things. These are some dependencies I have. And then you can also pull dependencies from online, which is kind of nice, but uh, we will not be going in depth about how Gradle works. I do some of that stuff manually when I do go to ship a product, but we will open up uh, Chrome. We'll go to LWJGL so that we can get our build.gradle to install uh, our project, to start up our project. So I'm just gonna go to LWJGL and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you guys can see this. I'm gonna hit download. And now we can hit customize LWJGL3, which is what we want to do. I'm going to choose release since that is the most steady. Make sure you hit Gradle up here. And I'm building for Windows X64. And then we can go up here. I do not want everything. I'm just going to do minimal OpenGL. JAML is always nice to have if you're setting up a new project. And that's it for me. And then we can go down here and you can see it's created this little Gradle script for you. You can just copy all of this, go back up into our IntelliJ file, and literally just paste right over all of this stuff. Uh, maybe not source compatibility. You don't want to keep source compatibility. This tells you what version of Java you're targeting, which I am targeting 1.8. I'm going to hit import changes. So that should build this new Gradle file. I'm going to show that build panel so that we can see it. So we see that it just configured it and it was successful in configuring it. So now let's go back to our LWJGL. Look at the get started. They give us a nice little hello world window. Let's copy this whole thing just so that we can make sure that we have LWJGL running properly. I'm going to copy all of this. We're going to go into here. We will create a new class inside of Java. I'm just going to call this hello world to match with uh, LWJGL's tutorial. We get all this. Let's run this. So I'm going to say run, run, and then we're going to run hello world. And as you can see, we get a red screen, which is exactly what they had. So we get that working properly. That's good. Now we want to actually have uh, LWJGL with I am GUI. So how in the world do you go about getting I am GUI? Well, the steps that I took were first, I searched for I am GUI Java port. Then as you can see, we get a bunch of different things popping up here. And I just clicked onto a few of these and found one that looked the best.
So I believe I used this port of imgui-java, and you can see he gives some pretty clear instructions here on how to get it working. So we can go down to here, and he says to add JSON a repository to our repository. So we'll copy that real quick, go back into IntelliJ, and go back into our build.gradle file up to our repositories, and we will just add JCenter to that list. And then we go back because we have a few more steps. He says to add the binding dependency for this guy. So we will go up here and inside of our dependencies, I'm going to leave a comment up here saying this is I am GUI dependencies, just so that we know. And then down here, this is LWJGL dependencies. That way, if you're ever looking through this, you just sort of know, hey, what all this stuff is coming from. And so then if we keep going down here, uh, he says if you want to use the LWJGL3 render, uh, which we do, but I believe, yeah, we should copy this also. <laughs> so we'll copy that, put it down here too, and we'll go back up. And he says the binary lib dependency, so we do want this as well, and we'll copy this. So basically, this says runtime only, which means this is for when you export, this is for the final product. This, These two are for while you're testing inside of here. And so this basically gives you the bindings to the C++ code, and this gives you the bindings to LWJGL so that it works in both. Okay, and then this should be good now. He also gives this nice thing. If we look up here, it says, this will start an example app, I am GUI GLFW example. So I open that up over here. And as you can see, we have a bunch of code in here, which we can sort of copy and paste to get things working. Uh, let's first of all, import these changes, make sure everything works. So it says we have an error on line 22 because we never declared this variable I am GUI natives. So let's go back up to here. And he says where I'm GUI natives could be this. Uh, let's fix that real quick. So we want to do natives windows. Let's add this variable up here so that we don't get that error. So we will just say project dot I am GUI natives equals, and then we're going to say whatever he set up here, which was natives dash windows. So we'll say natives dash windows. Import those changes again, see if it works. And actually, you should probably do project.ext.imgui-natives, and that should fix that error. There we go. And now if we notice when we import it, it is now configuring it and importing correctly. All right, and then we got configure successful, so that's a good sign. Now, once again, what I was saying is we can go up to here and start copying this code around and everything. So we know this is working properly. Let's go back into our Hello World class run this one more time. We notice it runs perfectly fine. I'm going to make that window a little bit bigger because that's super tiny real quick. So instead of 300 by 300, I'm going to do 1920 by 1080. You can do whatever size you want for this window. It's just a little bit better. Then we will go up to here and he has this whole function called init jillfw. Uh, we have that as well, so we should be good. But let's copy this one that he calls init I am GUI because this is all stuff that we should need. So we will copy that giant thing and we'll go down here right before we do the loop. We'll just copy this whole thing and we're going to notice a bunch of errors. This load from resources isn't working. Uh, that's because this is a custom function that he included in the code. We can find that if we do control F load from resources, you'll notice he has this little load from resources guy. Let's copy that as well so that we get rid of those errors. Paste it right above this public static void. And we cannot use this I am GUI GLFW example class because we don't have this. So we'll say hello world dot class dot get class loader. This will just get the file path relative to hello world. And it's looking for a resource as a stream of whatever the file name passed in is. And we can check out how that works in just a moment. Let's see what some of these other errors are. So we've got the error because of the mouse cursors. So let's go up to the very top because he defines a lot of different variables up here that we can use as well. So we have this whole big list of declarations. Let's just copy it all, except for the window, because that's for JillFW. We'll just copy all of those real quick, and we will paste them right below the window handle. And we get rid of all of those errors, which is good. So now that's working perfectly fine. Uh, now we just want to make sure that we are actually rendering IAM GUI. 
and showing his demo window, which we will find right here, the show UI. So let's copy this guy now. Show UI and we'll copy destroy I am GUI just so that we have that as well. And that should be good. We'll paste those below the loop right here. Uh, but I'm going to do it above that load resources. And this all looks good. This should show the demo window for us. Now we want to modify our loop so that we can actually show the window. So you'll notice if we scroll back up, we have this whole little bit about I am GUI stuff. So if we look, we can see this is just getting the time. And then this is just doing the GL stuff that we would do normally. Then this is where we start doing some different stuff. This is getting the window size, the frame buffer size, the cursor position, and he's actually going to send all those to IM GUI. So let's just copy all this uh, down to IM GUI GL3 render. And then we can see that's back to GL stuff. So GLFW swap buffers and pull events, which we do not need to worry about. So let's go above swap buffers because that's where he had his. We will put all this stuff back in and we will just hard code in delta time to be uh, 60 frames per second for now. You can change that in the future with whatever your delta time variable actually is if you would like. Now let's run this and we should get an I am GUI window. Instead we get an error. Ah, and it's saying, did you call I am GUI create context? So it seems that we missed a step in our initialization stage. That's because we never called init I am GUI, right? We copied the function, but we never called it. So right after we initialize GLFW, we should initialize I am GUI. So we see we say init, and then we should say init I am GUI to call that function that we copied. And we're going to see null pointer exception for the load from resources, which I had a feeling would happen uh, because we don't currently have these fonts loaded into our files. So let's just comment out all the font loading because that's not too important anyways. It's for custom fonts, which does make some things nice. That looks good. And then let's try and run this one more time. We get another error. And it looks like this might be happening because of that gl.create capabilities. So let's copy the gl.create capabilities and actually put it at the bottom of our init method, which is where I like to have it anyways, just so that we know that that is done. Okay, there we go. And we finally get this I am GUI window. Now, the text is super small. And so one way you could fix that is by doing the load font as resources as he was showing. I'll probably just zoom this in in post. But yeah, so now you have a simple I am GUI window showing up here and you can see that he has background color here, which isn't doing anything. Let's actually make it do something so that when we change the background color up there, it changes the background color in our actual demo. So if we scroll down to the loop, we'll see that we're just clearing it to red, to just red, and we're not actually uh, changing that depending on anything. But then if we go down to the show UI, you can see that he has this whole background color thing right here, and it's taking in this variable called background color, which if we control, we can see that's just a float array with three floats. So we're going to actually just use that variable up here instead. We'll say background color zero, background color one, background color two, and one for the alpha channel. And then you'll notice if we change this, and it's not going to change because we're not clearing the color every loop. So let's actually just move that up to here. We will clear the color every frame. And now if we go up here and we start changing things, you can see the background color just starts to change. And that is the power of I am GUI. As you can see, all we did was we called this function called show UI right after we started a new frame. What this does is it just starts calling different functions off of I am GUI. It begins a window, custom window, which if you notice, super small, but it says custom window up here. And then you can see everything exactly is laid out exactly as we see in the code, which is super nice. And then we can just sort of wrap things in if statements and then we know that something has changed if it was true if it returned true so we could wrap this in an if statement and that would tell us when the user was editing that three color and so this is just really nice because it's simple and it works now 
When you want to find out how to do something specific, what I typically do is I open up the demo window and then I'll go through all of the widgets or whatever I'm looking for and I will just look through the actual UI to see if I can find something specific that I'm looking for. Then what you have to do is you actually have to go to the C++ version of IM GUI. So this is dear IM GUI is the port that we are using and I'm going to go here, the okernut slash IM GUI. And then we can go into his demo.cpp because it's the exact same one as this demo, which is just a binding to the C++ function show demo window. And so if you find something that you want to use, so we'll go back into here and I will hit show demo window, then say I wanted to look into a widget and I wanted to know how to do a combo. And specifically, I wanted to do this combo one where it shows a bunch of different combos. What I would do is then with this file opened in okernut slash I am GUI, the demo.cpp, as you can see, I am GUI demo.cpp, I would say, okay, so this was the widget and this is the combo and it looks like combo one. So I'm going to say combo one, search that and it will take us directly to where he's doing the code for this. And this translates to Java by just replacing the double semicolons. This is a namespace identifier. Just replacing that with a dot. So I'm GUI dot will typically get you what you need. Sometimes it doesn't uh, because the port is not complete, but sometimes it does. And then for things like this, uh, they translate sort of well into Java. You do have to know a little bit of C++ to know exactly what's going on here. But for the most part, you can sort of figure out what's going on. And then this would give me an example of how to do something and then you can mimic it in your code and actually replicate it and get it done. The reason you have to do this too is because I'm GUI does not actually have any documentation. The code is its documentation. So this is typically the way you go about finding out how to do something in I'm GUI. But we have set up I'm GUI. We did not set up an I'm GUI layer or anything or uh, have it so that your whole game engine is incorporated with it, but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. I just wanted to show you guys how to get it set up real quick get the bindings all set up correctly and make sure that your Gradle file works. And that is what we have done. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below and I will try and address them. And if you want to see something else that's just like one tutorial specific thing about LWJGL, leave a comment below and we can take a look and see if we have the time and if that is doable in like a single tutorial. But that's it for this tutorial. I will see you guys next time. Thanks. See you.